In this video, I want to show you how to count the number of working days between two date values in Power BI. I'm going to show you the two ways, one using DAX and one using a custom function in Power Query. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's jump right into the demo that I've prepared for you today. I've created a very simple Power BI report here that just has a couple of uh, tables that I've created. So if we look at the data view here, we have the tickets table that just has two tickets. Um, it has some problems and it has two dates on each of these rows, ticket created date and ticket solved date. We have a generic calendar table that we're going to use for our time intelligence purposes. It only has uh, two extra columns that I've created, the day of the week and the day name. So just uh, day of the week. And also I've created another table here, the number of bank holidays that we have for the month. So the 3rd of May, 31st of May for the different bank holidays. And we're going to use it as a reference for later. And if we look at the relationship view here, you'll notice that we haven't got any relationships between tables. And I'll show you why that is in a minute. So let me give you the scenario that uh, we want to solve. So here we have the tickets table visualized as a table visual in our report view. Now what we want to do is we want to count the number of days elapsed within these tickets. So what is the difference between the created date to the solved dates in days? And normally this problem is pretty simple to fix because we have a couple of functions that are available for us to use. So if we go to the table view here we go to the tickets and let's say we'll create a new column right so let's say um we'll name this one days elapsed and to get that number all we need to do is use something called date diff which will just return the number of units we can specify uh, what kind of units these are days weeks months um, and you just need to feed it the two date values so we give it the uh, created date and the solved date column and we'll say okay give me the number of days in between these two dates so pretty simple if you hit enter and you'll see that it's giving us the number of days in between these dates and that's pretty easy however what you'll notice is that it doesn't exclude any of the weekends or bank holidays between these two dates. Uh, as I showed you in the bank holidays before, um, we want to exclude days that are not working days. So the 3rd of May should be excluded. And at the same time, in our calendars table, you'll notice that a lot of them have Saturdays and Sundays. Um, it's not related to the tickets, I'm just visualizing it to you. Um, so between the 1st and the 15th, which is the first ticket, um, there shouldn't be 14 days because if you just do the maths, there's 14 days, but it needs to exclude some days for the weekends and the bank holidays. So how would you solve that? So if you work with Excel before, you'll know that there is a function called network days, which pretty much does exactly this, which is excluding the non-working days from dates in order to get the working days in between two dates. However, we don't have the same thing in Power BI or in DAX. So basically we need to find a way to exclude the weekends and bank holidays directly using our model. And I want to show you how to do it step by step from here. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to sort out the calendar table and the bank holidays table. So I want to integrate the bank holidays in this calendar table and I want to be able to have a binary column that allows me to identify if that day is a work day or not. And to that, we're going to go to Power Query first. Uh, we're going to go to the calendars table and from here we're going to merge it with the bank holidays now we know that these have dates so we're gonna do a left join here and i'm just going to bring in the bank holiday name so here we go so you'll notice now that we have the bank holidays 
in this column name uh, and in this column we have the day name which is Saturday and Sunday and we know that Saturday is 5 and Sunday is 6. So having this data for us means that we can create this custom column that we can use for the binary. So let's create a new custom column here and we're gonna create something called is working day and we're gonna create an if statement here. So if the day of week is greater or equals to five, so we're saying if it's either Saturday or Sunday, or say name is not empty. So we're saying if it's uh, not empty and it's not Saturday or Sunday, then it's true. Otherwise, we'll give it false. So let's see if this will work. Yeah, it doesn't work. So probably I'll need to make this like this. False, like that. So here we go. So I've made the mistake here. It's kind of swapped around. So it's working day should be pointing at the days that are um, weekdays. So Tuesday here it should be true. And then this, 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 and this should be false. So we're just gonna swap those around. So it has to be like this. Okay. So here we go. So just to double check, Saturdays are not working days and bank holidays are all false. And now we're gonna go back to the tickets table and we're gonna create a new column. Now we're gonna name this column uh, working days elapsed just so that we can differentiate it between the the date diff column that we've just created so here we're going to wrap it with a calculate and what we're going to do is we're going to count the rows in the calendar table and we're going to add a couple of filter context for our count here so with calculate, you can add a couple of filter contexts. In our case, we're gonna add a couple and we'll have to. Um, so first we're gonna create the date between. But basically because there is no relationship between the two, we need to define explicitly uh, the start date and the end dates within the calendar table dates. So we're gonna say on the calendar date table, we want to, um, the start date will be the created date. And then the end date would be the sold date. So for the next filter context, we need to make sure that we exclude any days that are not working days. So remember, this is where the new column that we've created comes in. So if we just type is working day is equals to true. Then lastly, we need to add an all, which makes sure that it ignores any filter context in the calendar table. So it will um, disregard any filters that are applied to it. So we're gonna just uh, type the calendar table there. And that should be it. So now you have the number of working days um, between two dates using DAX in Power BI. So let's check that and make sure that's correct. So here we are, the calendar for May. And let's try to count the number of working days for the first ticket, just to validate that this is correct, right? So we know that the third is a bank holiday and we wanna count between the 1st of May to the 15th of May. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days, because the, uh, the first and the second are weekends, eight and ninth, and also 15. So that gives us nine working days between these two dates. So pretty easy. Now that you know how to calculate the number of working days using DAX in Power BI, I want to show you how to do it in Power Query using a custom function. Now, full disclaimer here, this function was created by Baz back at datatraining.io. Um, he has a YouTube channel where he explains the network days uh, similar to this, and he focuses on creating this custom function that you can use in Power Query. So if you want to see how it's constructed step-by-step, step, go check out his channel. I'll leave a link down in the description box as well. So to do it in Power Query, we're gonna go to Power Query first of all. We're going to create a new blank query. We're going to go to advanced editor 
and we're going to paste the code that uh, they've created back at datatraining.io. So here is the bit of script that creates a custom function that you can use. Now, uh, if you want to know how this is constructed and what it does line by line, the first line just uh, requests for a couple of things that you need to feed the custom function. So it asks for the two dates and you'll see how we do it later. So it will ask for the start date, the end date, and the holidays as a list. So this will be the bank holidays. And then what it does from here is it will uh, list the dates based on the dates that you've listed here. It will do the removing of the weekends and will also remove any holidays that you've given it on the holidays lists. And then it just returns the count of this list. And this is how the custom function works. So if we hit done here, so this is the function. And uh, we'll just rename this as uh, network days. And now it's sort of ready to use. The only thing that we need to do, however, is we just need to create a copy of this bank holidays. And I'm just going to reference it because the third parameter of our network days requires a list. Now, because the bank holidays list is a table, it's not a list. So we're just going to delete the um, dates, just keep the dates. And from here, we're going to go to transform and then convert this to a list. So now we have a list of dates that we want to exclude um, as holidays in this network days. So if we go to our tickets table now and we want to create this new column, we create custom column. I'm gonna name this one uh, working days elapsed. And then here, we're gonna start typing network days. So this is the new custom function that we've created, right? So if I open it, it will ask for three things. As we noticed before on the first line, it asks for the start date, which we know will be the created date. End date will be the solved. And then the holidays is a list. So here we created this bank holidays list. So uh, we just add that there, close it and hit okay. So here we go. So quite simply, we have the same values that we got in DAX, just counts the number of working days elapsed between two dates in Power BI. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to start calculating the number of working days between two dates in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.